Welcome to Sellers Army podcast, India's first private community for owners and managers of online stores. My name is Akhil Dua. Every Monday I chat with an industry expert on what strategies, business models and tactics they use to be successful in the online space. My guest today is Afroz Khan, who with his friend and Olympian Vishnu Vardhan built TennisHub.in back in 2013. I've been fascinated by your journey for a while. The last time I picked up a tennis racket was probably 10 years ago. Um, okay. but, uh, you know, you used to play tennis or? Yeah, so, but very infrequently back, back when I was um, in Miami, you know, the weather was, was mm. always good. Just like, like you said, you know, we would play within the society. We had a couple of tennis right. schools. Uh, there right. were a lot of college students there. So, I mean, you know, on the weekend we would play. Uh, but right. uh, more than playing tennis, uh, my interest really is in uh, speaking to people who have gone through this journey of converting their passion or their ha- or their hobby into something that you know eventually pays um, right. and making it into something beautiful like like you guys have done and that's really where I want to start um, you know I understand that you figured out way back in almost a decade ago that there was a gap in the market um, that yeah. you, know, you weren't really able to buy the branded and the and the uh, the good quality merchandise from the local tennis shop or the local not not even a tennis shop it probably was just like a sports sports shop correct yeah yeah, um, yeah yeah how did you go from that to okay i will build the first online tennis um, platform where people can come and buy these merchandise because you know having a hobby is one thing and then converting that into a business model what was that yeah. like um, and then the second part of what I want to understand is what was the process of finding your your business partner? So uh, I'm a tennis player too, uh, though I stopped playing professionally when I was very young uh, because I had to focus on my studies and all. But I, I I was still in touch with the game. I used to play club level game and all. So it was always a challenge for us to buy the equipment. Yeah. So uh, yeah. most of the players, uh, including me and most of the players whom I know, relied on somebody coming from US to get the stuff from there. Because, I mean, it was pretty challenging here. You just have the sports retailers. Most of them do not stock the tennis equipment. It was pretty challenging. And then that's when uh, e-commerce was booming at that time. Yeah. So that, that's when I thought it's an opportunity. And then um, that's how I got the idea to, to, to get into this uh, tennis retail e-com platform. And then it was only me then. I had to find a, a, found a, a partner with me. Uh, and, the, and, and then I believe somebody uh, uh, who is well known in the country, if, if somebody yeah. like that can come on board, either as a brand ambassador or, or a partner, that would be a good thing. So then uh, at that time, Vishnu, Vishnu had played Olympics for India 2012. Yeah? So towards the end of 2012 in, is when we started uh, uh, talking. So I did not know Vishnu. Uh, personally okay but because i also played tennis we had we had some common connects so that's that's how i got in touch with vishnu okay so i called him up we exchanged few messages few emails i shared my idea with him and then he liked it we met few times i initially proposed him to to get on board as a as a brand ambassador yeah 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 and then we we met few more times and then he really got interested and then he offered me uh, to, to join me as a founding partner. Okay. So at that time, it, I mean, obviously, it was, I was very excited. That's how, it, that's how the journey started. He's a wonderful guy, uh, grounded, very down to earth. And, and, and now we are more of close friends than business partners. So that's how it all started. That's pretty amazing, man. I, I mean, you, you said it uh, as if it was very easy. It's, it's really not. Um, I, I mean, for listeners who are who are who are going to eventually listen to this, it's. I think most of the time it just boils down to um, having the courage to share your ideas with enough people. Um, and right. I think I'm sure there were people in the beginning saying, "What you going to you going to sell a tennis racket and tennis balls online? Yeah. Why would why would somebody buy that? You know, wouldn't they want to touch a racket or touch a ball?" Um, but I think that's right. really how things things really start. Um, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you a quick thing now that you've, you've told this I just remembered something yeah so when I started the company we, we started out of my my house yeah there was a small 
room on on the uh, upper floor of my house right. that's where we started our company yeah and then uh, one of my dad's friend happened to visit visit our home and okay. then uh, dad took him upstairs to show my office and then he he came and and then he asked few questions obviously it did not make sense to him about what i was doing and then at the end he asked me why why are you doing this are you not able to find a good job is that what <laughs> is that the reason <laughs> you know so I, that was that was so embarrassing and and, and, and still said it's one of the most embarrassing moments of my life yeah, that's funny so man. that's how people took it initially uh, very discouraging I, i can hardly recollect people who who would encourage me uh, But yeah, that that's part and parcel of uh, uh, an entrepreneur's life. Yeah, it's a it's a very lonely uh, it's a very lonely journey to begin with. Uh, yeah, and I, I actually like the route that you took of uh, you know finding somebody who's equally passionate about the game, uh, who can also yeah. be the face of of the company. Um, are you comfortable sharing some numbers uh, what uh, what kind of investments uh, did you initially put in so we we started really with a, a nothing kind of an investment very little investment most of the investment would suffice for our uh, uh, the technology cost and and few things here and there so uh, so luckily for us what happened was uh, when we started we just had couple of employees apart from me vishnu obviously was pretty, pretty active uh, playing the game he was on tour most of the time traveling he was hardly in hyderabad yeah so he was not involved in day to day operations of the company uh, it was okay. only me and then we had couple of guys one was uh, who took care of digital marketing and then we had one more guy who took care of the packaging things and all so then we 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 needed somebody to take care of our technology and we couldn't afford that guy yeah yeah so what we did was i i just went ahead and posted in some of the forums that i'm looking for a freelancer okay one of a guy uh, replied to my post and then uh, then i got to know that he was from my hometown uh, we connected well i told him very very uh, transparently like look uh, we started with very little investment i do not have a lot of uh, money to pay you so whatever best you can do uh, you let me know and then he was he was kind enough to agree to start working on a project without even charging anything and okay. then he was like okay it's okay no problem so he had a small it company yeah so uh, he was pretty kind enough then he said it's okay you do not have to pay anything up front whenever you guys raise any investment you can pay me at that time yeah and then uh, that's how i started getting my technology support on a conversation i just shared with him that i'm looking for an investment and then suddenly next day he calls me and he says look i want to invest in your company you know <laughs> because he saw that early traction he saw oh, yeah. <laughs> how things were going about you know so he 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 offered me to invest uh, again his investment was not much uh, he he just invested about 15 lakh rupees yeah so four months into our company uh, it was not bad for us so initially initially we just we just relied on we couldn't stock yeah, yeah? because yeah. because uh, the equipment that we sell are pretty expensive and we, we couldn't stock much so with his money uh, and then because of him coming on board apart from the investment part he was also uh, very actively involved in, in in the company as in as in taking care of the technology part yeah and then uh, yeah we upgraded our technology and then we we started spending a bit on our marketing and that's how the first investment happened and then i'll also tell you about the next next round of investment that we raised so so after we we raised this money after uh, after about 6 months or so yeah so one of my friend called and then uh, uh then we we got talking and all then he was looking for some investment opportunity so that's when we raised the actual bigger investment okay so we all almost invested invested close to a uh, close to 1.5 a working capital yeah that's when we actually started started buying stock and taking a warehouse stocking stuff and then that that's when we actually scaled up yeah um so i view investments as as a validation of of your idea as well i think the the, the initial investment from you know the the it company just 
kind of validates that you were on the right track. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. More than the money, it's it's uh it's a validation of what you are working on, um, and um, a testament to yeah, okay, you know, we now we have yeah. some early traction, so we need some more fuel to to multiply that now. Correct. At that time, um, I don't think Amazon was uh, clear in India. I think Flipkart was probably around, um, and maybe yeah. a few. Um, few independent uh, websites that that were probably selling not just tennis but you know the entire gamut of uh, sports equipment what uh, right. what were the challenges that you faced after you know once you raised those two rounds of of money what challenges were you facing uh, competing with these big guys flipkart would sell at crazy discounts and it would have been really difficult for us to even get close to the discount close to the pricing yeah. So at that point, we just we just took a call that okay, look, you know what what we're going to do? We are not going to focus on 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 uh, competing against them on pricing, but uh, then we evaluated, we analyzed, we evaluated, we 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 just chalked down some of the differentials that we can offer to our customer. Yeah, eventually the consumer is the same who shops on Flipkart who shops with us. Yeah, and we made a list of some of the differentials that we can offer to the consumer. That Flipkart or Amazon cannot. Okay. Yeah. Uh, obviously, because we were in a niche category, we had some of the advantages of you know uh, having a better knowledge about the product. Uh, we can we could curate our our catalog, the products uh, for a consumer. It was easy to discover a product. All these advantages we, we we could carry because of being being a niche player. Yeah? Yeah. So apart from these things, we also had to uh, uh, identify those differentials. So some of those differentials were like you know uh, uh, we offered some of some of innovative things like a racket upgrade program, hmm. which which was very very successful, which which still is very successful. Any customer can just come exchange exchange his used racket and just buy a new racket, yeah. And then we offered stringing service along with along with the racket, yeah. Some of these right. things which were not which were not offered by uh, these bigger players. Uh, and then, and then, obviously, service was one of the most important things that we focused on. We had to prioritize our customer experience. We tied up with some of the best logistics partner. We use Blue Dart. We still use Blue Dart, though they are very expensive. But they are the best logistics partner to have in the country. We've always been using Blue Dart, and then, uh, luckily, I've, I've, I've been very lucky to have a to have a, a good team with me. Most of our team members. Uh, uh, I've been working for a long time, so being able to maintain a consistent customer, customer, customer care, and and lot of things like that. So these are the things I felt made the real difference. So today, uh, Touchwood, we we sell more than what Flipkart and Amazon sell. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was looking biggest. at the numbers. There's a, I think you have almost fifty percent of the share of the online. Um, Sales for for uh, tennis merchandise. Correct. Yeah. That's pretty. That's yeah. pretty good. Uh, one thing that you mentioned, I want to kind of highlight again uh, the upgrade, the racket upgrade program. I mean, that can be that can be used by sellers uh, selling mattresses. It could be used by somebody who's online selling bicycles. It could be used by you know, majority of the players, it's, it's such a simple thing to do, but exactly. um, it's yeah. a, it's providing that year round service mm -hmm. and not, not thinking of a sale as a one time sale, which usually happens exactly. on a, in a big box. But, but yeah. you guys are now saying, okay, you know, whatever you need, even if you just buy a single racket, you know, come back to us, upgrade with us, you know, we'll do the, True. we'll do the servicing, we'll do the maintenance, True. we'll do the upgrades. Sorry to interrupt you. So what we did, Akhil, was uh, at that time when we started this racket upgrade, we, we ran a small survey of about uh, 100 known players. Yeah. And we asked, asked them one single question. So we figured out the average number of years that a player changes his racket was about four to five years. Okay. Which is pretty high. Yeah. So we asked them, why do you take so long to upgrade your racket? Because like 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 your mobile phones, there is a racket upgrade in a particular racket every year. 
right. like a Wilson racket, a racket that you play with, that upgrades every year. Yeah, the technolo- technology upgrades and other things also upgrade. So we ask them, why do you upgrade? Why, why, why don't you upgrade every year? Why does it take so long for you to change your racket? So the most common answer we got was obviously the price point, the budget. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So then we ask them, uh, what you if you get the get the racket at fifty percent lower price than what you're getting it now? Yeah. Then they said yes. I mean, if that is the case, we would we would we would upgrade it once in a year or two years. Then what we offered them was, you know, look what what you can do is the racket that you're playing with right now, you can give those racket to us, yeah, and then uh, and then you just have to pay depending on the condition of the racket. You just have to pay 40, 50 percent of the price of a new racket. Right, right. So that that sounded very interesting, and that's where we got the idea. And then we took it online, we launched it, and uh, this is one of one of our most successful uh, program till date. So even on the uh, on the website, um, and I'll I'll pull up the site in just a second. I think I saw yeah. a uh, a listing for uh, used rackets or used merchandise. So Correct. I'm guessing that's the merchandise that goes in a separate exactly. pile and then a beginner or somebody who does not have the budget can, uh, uh, can, can, cool. start, can start with the use. Let me, yeah. let me pull up the, uh, the website in, while we speak. So yeah. uh, there we go. There we go. Use rackets. And then I mean, that's the just, racket upgrade below that. Yeah. That's amazing, dude. Really. And, and this is something that you know, most of the sellers uh, can try and replicate, uh, re- replicate something, the sale, uh, racket sales, use rackets, rackets, okay. upgrade. Rapid upgrade will get a new racket for your old one. This is how it works. Huh. And it, it, it encourages people to get into the game, right? Um, and keep on playing and, and keep on, uh, you know, don't let don't let the budget stop you from uh, yeah uh, from yeah. from enjoying what you do. True. Tennis is an expensive game, and then uh, yeah, some of these things do really help. Yeah, I think uh, what an average racket is about eighteen thousand or twenty thousand rupees. About twenty twenty two. A performance racket costs you about twenty to twenty three thousand MRP, and then obviously there is a standard. 25-30% discount. So you get it anywhere between 14 to 16,000. Yeah, so doing that upgrade, um, you know, year on year. And then most, most of the players have to carry at least at least two to three rackets with them. Yeah. Because the string string breaks and then you need to have a spare racket with you. You know, so that's like a, a 30, 30 to 50,000 investment every time you want to upgrade a racket. Yeah, I think tennis and golf are uh, the high-end sports. Yeah. That's great, man. Um, can you can you share a little bit about um, what kind of platforms you guys were using for for your website? I mean, at that time you didn't have uh, uh, you know Shopify and and all these guys were have just just recently come into the uh, into the game. What were you guys? Right. What platform we've did you been, use? We've been on Magento since since the day one. Okay. We are still on Magento. Uh, yeah. So, so it's been, it's been uh, a consistent our, our, experience then. Consistent, yeah, yeah. So our technology team again has been has been working with us for over five years now, and yeah. then and then because of that, we've been very consistent with with our technology. Nothing much has changed. Okay. From our in, initial days. Yeah. Okay. It's sometimes easy to get that traction because you know you're part of the game. You know uh, you have a brand ambassador, so he speaks to a couple of hundred people uh, who start yeah. buying these things. I think once you have that few hundred customers and then getting to the, to the next uh, round of bringing customers is, is, is very difficult because now you have to start spending money uh, to get those right. to acquire them. What, uh, you know, what channels did you use back then and what channels are you using now to find new customers um, and also to retain the existing ones? So uh, one one good thing about our category was we know where our customers are. We could yeah. easily target our customers. So yeah. our customers are on the tennis courts. So apart from the regular conventional digital marketing strategies like social Google AdWords and all, uh, we also targeted our customers uh, on the tennis courts. 
we run something called a coach discount program uh, yeah. wherein we 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 tie up with the coaches we offer them additional discounts and all we have our branding at their academies at their clubs where they're coaching and then uh, and then these 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 coaches act as a you know brand ambassadors they promote tennis hub uh, among the players or students who come to their academies so in a way we i mean you know uh, that has helped uh, targeting our customers has been pretty easy yeah, i think that's a i think that's a genius idea you know just go to just go to where who the, the players are going to listen to you know if if i have a if i have a coach for whatever sport and he says you know what there's a really good website you should buy stuff from there there's a very good chance that I, so, that's where i would that's where i would so, go so we we almost have about 300 plus coaches uh, from across the country uh, okay. who are partnered with us uh, as part of our coach discount program okay. and then yeah these are the guys who who, who usually promote us uh, offline the coaches now do you do you provide uh, besides discounts do you provide any other uh, any kind of training or any other uh, anything else to these coaches that adds value to to their game or adds value to their yeah so what we used to do uh, initially was uh, some of our top performing coaches yeah uh, so uh, we we ran some uh, clinics with vishnu vardhan vishnu would visit their training centers whenever he is there in that particular city and then uh, you know that would add value to their academy or the club where the coach trains so uh, these are some of the value added things that we offer to the to the to the coaches that's excellent man yeah i was that is i think that is what i was trying to figure out so you actually build an inofficial community of of coaches in a way uh, in order to get to your customer i think right. it's i think it's so important for uh, for entrepreneurs to realize that um, that sooner than later you have to build a community around your product uh, it might not be the community might not be the direct user of your product but eventually you know having that community is only going to um, keep on bringing business you know you don't have to keep struggling uh to make a sale every single day now if you have a coach in a certain city you know that he's plugging your your website and your products if they are good you know they'll plug it a couple of times but you you in the back end also have to uh make sure that the quality yeah. supports quality supports their uh, their statement i i saw that yeah. you had partnered with uh with the chennai open was that a turning point for you guys uh, getting that limelight getting that uh, that media and that uh, public relation i would say i wouldn't say that was a turning point but it definitely helped us so okay. uh, yeah we've always been an online platform and the more uh, people saw saw us in the offline uh, uh, wherever possible whether it is the tournaments or tennis courts and all yeah. that, that just added to our credibility you see so the, the association with chennai open definitely helped us um a quotation that i saw on your uh, on your linkedin profile it said chase the vision not the money the money will end up following you it's uh, something that a lot of people have different versions of um i like to uh, understand it from somebody who's been through it uh, now you've gone through going through your uh, your father's house with a so small office uh, in the top uh, two now you know working oh, yeah. with we've changed five offices since then right <laughs> so yeah so, so um you know what what is your what is your uh, i guess your uh, vision or your um, you know what is your relationship with money now having been through having been through all this uh, and you know building something then that then got acquired by a uh by a larger company is also a big testament to what you guys were building um what do you still believe in this quote uh, or what what has changed so it's i mean for every entrepreneur it's very important to have a vision uh, that you really believe in uh but i mean you know this has always been a, a fact in our journey of tennis up uh i'll tell you something very interesting i never never until now approach anybody for for an investment 
yeah whatever money i have raised uh, it has all come come to us because yeah. we've been able to build tennis hub yeah uh, uh, i mean starting from my first investment the next investment how it is the entrepreneurs do is they focus less on building a quality product and focus more on you know raising money yeah most of the time they are on road meeting investors venture capitalists and all uh, i would say i mean you have to focus build something something uh, uh, that interest uh, investors and trust me investors will come to you that's great man um afroz thank you so much for uh, for your time thank you so much for sharing um, you know these um, these really important lessons i think i think there is so much to learn from uh, from this half an hour of conversation there's really good things that people can pick it up and, and implement in their business thank you so much for your time i'll talk to you soon thank you thank you thank you all right okay bye. take care bye Thank you for listening to Sellers Army podcast. I hope you enjoyed and learned from the conversation. Sellers Army is India's first private online community for owners and managers of e-commerce stores. If you're interested in joining, message me at nine six seven double three nine one two one two or email me at dua akhil d u double a k h i l at gmail dot com. New episode every Monday. Stay tuned.